Welcome back. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati, and uh, let's continue our discussion about the uh, photosynthesis. And so far, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, light light harvesting complexes, and then we have further discussed about the uh, C3 cycle and C4 cycle. We have also discussed uh, the advantages what plant is uh, providing by following the C4 cycle, and uh, so, before continuing uh, further uh, into uh, what are the different factors which are uh, actually uh, 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 governing or regulating the uh, rate of photosynthesis, we will we'll, we'll take a few uh, crucial questions which are related to this topic uh, uh, photosynthesis. So, what are these questions? Uh, you can see on the PowerPoint slide, uh, these questions are. Apart from that, we have few questions which are related to uh, the uh, chlorophylls. So, Rubisco has two activities, one is carboxylase activity and the other one is the oxygenase activity. And you know that the carboxylase activity is doing the CO2 fixation whereas the oxygenase activity is doing the photo respiration okay and we have while we were discussing about the photo respiration we said that uh, the uh, why um, whether the rubisco will go for this pathway or this pathway will always be decided by a ratio of carbon dioxide versus oxygen. Okay. So, now see in the case of C3 plant and in the case of C4 plant. So, in the case of C3 plant, it is actually uh, so CO2 versus oxygen will be from coming from the environment, means whatever is there in the outside is going to be decide the uh, uh, the ratio of co2 and uh, ratio of co2 and oxygen uh, within the leaf of c3 plant and that's how the environmental concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen is going to decide what proportion of viscous activity will go for the CO2 fixation and what proportion of uh, rubiscous activity will go for the photorespiration. Whereas, in the case of C4 plant, uh, you know that the CO2, uh, CO2 fixation, the primary CO2 fixation in the case of C4 plant is done by the PEP carboxylase and so because of that, the it is not so carbon dioxide is in the case of C4 plant is not dependent on environment. Okay. It is dependent on the activity of PEP carboxylase because the PEP carboxylase is going to produce the malic acid and that malic acid is going to provide the carbon dioxide to the rubisco to have to do the biosynthetic pathway. So, that is why in this case the ox the presence of oxygen does not matter and presence of oxygen in the environment does not matter and that is how the in the case of C4 plant the uh, Although uh, C4 plant, it is going to show the more carboxylation. On the other hand, 
this CO2 concentration which is be which is going to be built up by the breakdown of malic acid or oxaloacetic acid in the case of C4 cycle is going to be very very high compared to the CO2 concentration which the C3 plants are going to have. Now related to this question, so this is about the uh, answer of the question number 1 that uh, in the case of, so why the C4 plant or why the Rubisco will carry out more carboxylation in C4 plant because the CO2 concentration is going to be very high because it is not dependent on the environment, it is actually the CO2 concentration which is coming by the breakdown of malic enzyme or malic acid or the uh, the oxaloacetic acid. In the other case, the because it is this CO2 is not dependent on the environment and CO2 and oxygen ratio is not at all coming into a picture of C4 plants, the, the level of photorespiration is going to be very very low compared to the C3 plant and that is how the, uh, the carboxylation or the uh, carboxylase activity of Rubisco is going to be very very high in the case of C4 plant. Now coming to the question number 3, uh, you know that the uh, in the case of uh, C4 plant the, uh, uh, the fixation is happening in the bundle sheet or the bundle sheet cells whereas the primary fixation is happening into the mesophyll cells. So, number of bundle sheet cells are very low and that is why the question number 3 says that even there are very few cells which are actually doing the biosynthetic pathway that is the Calvin cycle. Uh, even then there is a very very high productivity which is found in the case of C4 plant. So, the question, so the answer is very very related to this only. In the case of C4 plant the, the primary fixation happens in the mesophyll cells and where the prep carboxylase is going to fix the carbon dioxide from which is coming from the environment into a malic acid and then this malic acid is going to give the carbon dioxide for the secondary fixation by the Rubisco. And because of, because of this secondary fixation and because the CO2 concentration is going to be very very high, the ultimate production is going to be very high. On the other hand, so, uh, so question number 3 why there is a more production in the case of CIPO plant number 1 because of high carbon dioxide ok. Number 2 uh, the primary acceptor is PEPS carboxylase and PEP carboxylase uh, is going to fix the carbon dioxide from the environment. So, because of this, these plants are not going to lose any of their synthesized material in the process of photorespiration. So, number one, because of high CO2 concentration, the ultimate sugar which is they are going to produce is going to be high because they have a PEC carboxylase as a primary CO2 uh, acceptor molecule, uh, they, they, they will not dependent on the environmental CO2 to do a actual biosynthetic pathway. And number 3, because they are not dependent on the uh, environmental CO2 or Rubisco is not going to experience the environmental CO2 versus oxygen ratio, uh, the photorespiration level is going to be very, very low. And all these factors are going to contribute for the higher productivity in the case of C4 plant. Now, it, uh, it comes to question number 2 and question number 2 says, now question number 2 says, uh, the, uh, by looking at the internal structure of a leaf or a structure of a plant, can you tell whether the plant is C3 or C4? So, the answer of this question is that if you take the uh, uh, internal structure of a leaf, uh, you can be able to uh, very precisely say whether the plant will follow a C3 cycle or the C4 cycle. So, what is the difference? 
in the case of C C3 plant C3 plants normally contains the mesophyll cells okay but they don't have the bundle sheet whereas in the case of C4 plant it contains both the mesophyll cells and bundle sheet cells so if you cut the uh, if you cut a section of a leaf and then you stain the leaf uh, uh, for looking at the internal structures if you could find only the mesophyll cells uh, it is the c3 plant if you could find the mesophyll and the bundle sheet cells then these are the c4 plant but related to this structure related to this question there is another question which says that can you can you identify a plant simply by looking at the external structure whether it is uh, it is going to follow the c3 cycle or the c4 cycle so in that case the answer is no so by just by looking at the external structure of a plant you cannot say whether this plant is going to follow a c3 cycle or the c4 cycle for doing knowing this answer you have to Uh, cut the uh, leaves and you have to see the internal anatomy of the leaf and you have to see whether the leaf contains the bundle sheet cells or not now the question number 4 so this question is related to our lecture number 2 where we have discussed about the different light harvesting complexes and we have discussed about the Uh, chlorophyll as well as the accessory pigments which are playing role in the uh, case of photosynthesis so in that way we have discussed that the chlorophyll a is actually the primary photosynthetic pigment because it contains the photo uh, photosynthesizer 1 and the photocenter 2 so if a plant does not contain chlorophyll a it contains only very high concentration of chlorophyll b or the xanthophyll or carotenoids these kind of plants will not going to do the photosynthesis so if you are not going to have the chlorophyll a you are not this plant is not going to do the photosynthesis so answer to this question is so answer to question 4 is that if a plant contains very high quantity of chlorophyll b but it does not contain the chlorophyll a this plant it will not going to do the photosynthesis the question the second part of the question is then why the chlorophyll b and other accessory pigments are present in the plant the answer is these accessory pigments like chlorophyll b xanthophyll or carotenoids are actually having the role in the harvesting the in capturing the light capturing the high energy light number 1 number 2 to protect the chlorophyll a from the photo oxidation okay so the accessory pigments are required to protect the chlorophyll a from very very high radiation which is coming from the sun and number 2 it actually uh, helps in capturing the high energy and transferring that high energy uh, to a chlorophyll in a very very softer mode so that the chlorophyll a will utilize that high energy to synthesize the uh, 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 synthesize the uh, food 
Now we come to the question number 5. So, you know that the purpose of the sunlight is 2. The purpose of sunlight. So, sunlight when it falls onto the plant has two roles. One is it is actually doing the photosynthesis okay and what is the product of photosynthesis so what product of the photosynthesis is food food means the biosynthetic chemical material and that chemical material is going to be used for two purpose one for the growth of the plant number 2 for the synthesis of alternate materials which are required for running the and one of such material is the photosynthetic pigment. See when I say alternate material means for example DNA, for example the cellular components like cytosol, DNA, RNA, uh, whatever is required for supporting the growth, for example, some of the plant hormones. So, those are something which, which are not the product of photosynthesis, but they are important for doing the, uh, for completing their, uh, completing this cycle. So, in one of the such product is the photosynthetic pigment. So, the plant, uh, if a plant is the leaf which is actually on the, in, kept in the sun, uh, will going to do more number, of, more photosynthesis. So, if you do more photosynthesis, you are going to have the higher synthesis of the photosynthetic pigment. And once you have the higher synthesis of photosynthetic pigment, your leaf is going to be in a darker uh, shades. Whereas, if you keep the plant in a shade where the sunlight is going to be low, you are going to be less production of uh, less, uh, less photosynthesis and in that case there will be a less synthesis of photosynthetic pigment and because of that the leaf is going to be the uh, lighter shades. So, this is not even happening uh, uh, like uh, from the sunny side to uh, sunny uh, sunny side to the shades, it is even happening within the same leaf. For example, if you see a leaf and if I ask you can you say which leaf is facing toward the sun and which leaf is facing towards the opposite side or which leaf side is top side and which one is the bottom side. Okay. So, the leaf uh, top side is going to be of darker green and this side it is going to be light green and that is how you can compare that this is the top surface facing towards the sun and this is a light face towards uh, towards the sun. Now, you can see a leaf. Okay. So, if you see this leaf what you can see that this side is more dark and whereas, the opposite side is light and this is what is what we have discussed. The, the, the side which is uh, slightly dark is actually facing towards the sun and because of that this top surface is doing more photosynthesis and that is how there is a higher production of photosynthetic pigment compared to the leaf which is on the opposite side and this side it is not getting the uh, same amount of light, uh, same amount of sunlight and because of that it is very very it is uh, of uh, light color. So, uh, now, we will come to the uh, uh, next question and next question is the question number 6. So, the question number 6 says that if you are putting a plant into a shade or putting into a dark, why its leaves are turning into yellow or pale green? The answer is very clear, sunlight. So, answer is very simple, what we have discussed for question number 5. Photosynthesis is more, more food, more photosynthetic pigment. If you keep it in the dark, there will be less photosynthesis, less photosynthetic pigment and because of that, uh, it is going to be of 
uh, pale color or pale green color. In addition to that, the photosynthetic pigment is stable when there is a light, it is unstable when there is a dark. Okay? So, because of that, if you are keeping the plant in dark for a very, very long time, uh, the stability of the photosynthetic pigment is going to be reduced and because of that, uh, the chlorophyll A is going to be damaged or degraded and because of and that is how the leaf will lose its green color because you know that the chlorophyll molecule is green in color. So, that chlorophyll content is going to be reduced because the chlorophyll is more stable in the presence of light and it is less stable in the presence of dark. But apart from this, you are going to have the xanthophyll and you are going to have the keratinides which are actually the accessory pigments and they will give the yellow color to the leaf. So, that is how if you keep the plant into the dark, the leaf will turn into yellow or uh, they will go into the pale green because the chlorophyll is going to be degraded whereas, the xanthophyll and keratinoids are going to give the yellow or the pale green color. So, answer of this question, the second part is which pigment do you think is more stable? And the answer of this question is that the xanthophyll as well as the keratinoids are more stable compared to the chlorophyll. Now, this is what we have discussed about the some few of the questions which are related to the topic so far what we have discussed. And now, we will discuss uh, about cam plants. So, what are these cam plants? See, you have you have, have if you might have seen the leaf anatomy. What I have in the leaf anatomy, the leaf is getting the uh, the. So, this is the stomata which is being used to provide the. So, these are the bundle sheath and these are mesophyll right. But these stomatas are being used to provide the CO2 for the carbon fixation into either the bundle sheath cells or the mesophyll cells. But there are in plants where which does not open their stomata during the daytime. So, as you remember the light reactions happens when there is a sun in the uh, during daytime, whereas the dark reactions happens at any moment of time. Okay. So, the dark reaction does not need the uh, sunlight. Okay. So, uh, but they what they need the dark reaction what the dark reaction needs is the availability of carbon dioxide. So, if there is a plant which actually wants to keep the stomata close and why they, they will keep the stomata close? Because as they are providing the carbon dioxide, there is a always a loss of water by the evaporation. So, some of the plants are being able to uh, 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 provide this water by their very, very good efficient uh, root system. But the plants which are uh, growing in this condition where there is no, no water available or there is a low level of water available such as the plants which are available in deserts. The plant which are available in desert, the temperature is very high and there is a low level of water. So, for these kind of plant, the, they want to conserve the water as much as possible. So, in these kind of plant, they always keep their stomata closed during the daytime when the temperature is very high. 
and as a result what will happen is that the light reactions are happening they are producing very high quantity of uh, uh, the reducing equivalent which they can be used in producing that uh, for the dark reaction, but the dark reaction is not going to operate until the carbon dioxide is available. So, in these kind of plant they are actually go for another round of another kind of adaptation. And as you might have this uh, seen that the light reaction as well as the dark reactions in all other plants like C3 plants or the C4 plants, the light reactions are always been followed by the dark reaction. So, that whatever the reducing equivalent you have generated during the light reaction are being used in synthesizing the sugar by running the dark reactions. But in these kind of unique conditions where you cannot run the dark reaction when the light is available uh, because the stomata is going to be closed and there will be no carbon dioxide available for this particular plant. The plant has adopted a different kind of metabolism and that metabolism is known as the CAM metabolism or CAM cycle. So, what is that adaptation? In this kind of adaptation, you have to dissect the light reaction as well as the dark reaction in such a way that the uh, you can be still be able to synthesize the uh, 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 synthesize the uh, sugar, but without opening the stomata. Because if you open the stomata, the plant will die by the dehydration because the large quantity of water will be removed. So, how to that how to achieve that? So, for achieving that these plants have adopted a different kind of anatomy as well as the physiological adaptation. So, in this plant what they adopt they use they use the chloroplast. So, this is the chloroplast and this is the vacuum. Okay. So, by following a C4 cycle, what they do is so they take the carbon dioxide. So, what they do is they dissect the whole reaction uh, based on whether it is day or night. So, what happened during the night? and what happened during the daytime. So, as you have remember that the in the C4 cycle also in the mesophyll cells they have produced the malic acid as well as the aspartic acid and that aspartic acid moved to the bundle sheet and there it the malic acid or the aspartic acid has produced the oxalo uh, has produced the uh, carbon dioxide for the fixation into the C3 cycle utilizing the Kelvin cycle. So, in this case what happen is when the night stomata open in the daytime stomata close. So, during the night the stomata is open. So, what we will do is they will run they will go for CO2 they will follow a C4 cycle okay, and they will produce the malic acid. Now, this malic acid and they will do that in a very very large quantity by, uh, by utilizing the reducing equivalent whatever is being generated during the daytime. And this malic acid instead of staying in the chloroplast will move to the vacuole and being stored for the whole night. Okay. Once the uh, day will come, okay. so in the daytime the malic acid is present in the vacuole this is the chloroplast. Okay. So, what will happen is the malic acid will come out and it will go to the chloroplast. and 
malic acid will release the carbon dioxide. So, during the day time the chloroplast is running the light reactions and producing the RTC equivalent and at the same time the malic acid which is present in the vacuole will move to the chloroplast and then it will go for the Kelvin cycle and generate the sugar. So, that is how they will manage even the uh, loss of water as well as they will manage the photosynthesis. So, in this kind of plant the adaptation is making a unique cycle and unique cycle in a sense that they have actually dissected what is actually happening between the uh, mesophyll as well as the bundle sheath and now they have dissected that between within the cell and they have dissected between the chloroplast as well as the uh, vacuole. So, uh, Let us discuss how, how, uh, how, how a particular factor in a generic mode discovers a biological process. So, if you see uh, any, any x, y, z or any factor for uh, any biological process. So, what happen is if you take the process and if you take the factor x and you plot how the factor x is affecting the, uh, the kinetics of the process, what you will find that when the factor is 0, the, 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 uh, the kinetics of the process is almost 0, but as the, process, as the factor is increasing, the process goes up and then ultimately it reaches to a maxima and after that it goes further down. So, because of this kind of a unique pattern with any of the factor which are governing the biological processes, the Professor Sack has uh, coined the term called as cardinal points. And what Professor Sack says that that in a in a particular biological response of a factor, there are three different types of cardinal points could be possible. So these what are these uh, three uh, cardinal points? You can have a cardinal point of the minimum. minimum, then you can have the optimum and then you can have the maximum. What is mean by these terms? What is mean by the minimum is that at this particular concentration of the uh, particular factor the biological process is not going to happen means the biological process is will not going to uh, will not uh, will not proceed and what is mean by the optimum is that at that particular concentration so this is the uh, optimum so at this particular uh, concentration this particular factor is going to accelerate or going to affect this particular bio, uh, the biological process in a more optimal way or the most the best way okay and after this as you in, as you are going to increase the concentration of factor x it is actually not going to contribute into accelerating the biological process and that's how you are going to get the concentration at which the molecule is going to be inhibitory or going to uh, reverse the uh, acceleration process and that is how you are going to have three cardinal point, one is called minimum, optimum and the maximum. So, this is what we have so far discussed about any generic biological process or generic process where a particular factor x is going to have three different cardinal points to affect the process. But as far as we know that in the case of photosynthesis it does not contain a single factor. So, what are the different factors 
which could affect the photosynthesis. So, as you know that photosynthesis has two phases, one is light phase and the other one is the dark phase or the biosynthetic phase. The light phase is as well as the dark phase are going to be dependent on many of the factors. For example, the dark light phase is going to depend on the light as well as the photosynthetic pigment. Similarly, the dark phase is going to depend on the some of the environmental factor as well as the enzyme as well as the machinery. So, because of that the factor which are going to affect the photosynthesis can be broadly being categorized into two different categories. One factors which are environmental factors or which are actually outside the plant and number two the factors which are present within the plant. Okay. So, it can be categorized into two categories. One is the environmental factor. Within the environmental factor, what are the factors? As I said, light, number two, the carbon dioxide, number three, the soil water, number four, the minerals, number 5, uh, the oxygen, number 6, the air pollutants. Okay. So, these are the category, these are the molecules which are within the category of environmental factors. Within, within the light, there are three different parameters. One is the intensity of light. The second one is the uh, duration of light. And the third one is the, the quality of light. Okay. Similarly, in the CO2 and other kind of parameters. Now, the B is the plant associated factor and when I say plant associated factor means the factor which are uh, very much present within the leaf. So, within this you have the leaves number 2 the chlorophyll content, and number three, the uh, other kind of uh, factors like the carbohydrates and hormones. When I say the leaf, then within the leaf also there are many, many minute uh, points which also we can discuss. So, as I said, the photosynthesis is a very, very complicated process and that is why it is actually been dependent on many factors and that is what we have listed. Broadly, it is categorized in the environmental factor as well as the plant associated factors. So, uh, just now what we were discussing and what uh, the professor Sack has uh, proposed the cardinal points that is only for the one factor. But when we discuss or when we say okay we, uh, we are there is a multifactorial uh, 
uh, event which is actually governing a biological process then you the things becomes more and more complicated and to understand these kind of process the professor blackman has proposed the law of limiting factor so what is the law of limiting factor So, law of limiting factor by the professor Blackman has uh, is explaining the uh, the processes which are governed by the multiple factors. So, according to this uh, uh, this uh, uh, hypothesis or this kind of uh, law, what it says that if you are progressing a biological process, or suppose you are monitoring the uh, progression of a biological process, the uh, one of the factor which is going to be rate limiting is going to be the factor which is going to decide the uh, at what speed you are going to run this particular process. Means, if suppose there are there is a fact there is a process which is governed by the three factors. So, if the two even if even if factor number suppose a process is governed by three factor like a b and c. So, even you keep the a and c in the saturating amount, uh, even then it is not uh, ensured that the process will go with a very, very high speed because the b might be a limiting factor and the concentration as well as the availability of the factor B might decide the, uh, the speed of the overall process. Let us see in the PowerPoint slide how uh, the there are multiple factors are actually uh, governing the progression of the photosynthesis. So, as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, the, uh, the uh, uh, the process of the uh, law of limiting factor is shown. So, according to the Blackman, the law of limiting factor says that if there is a process and it is conditioned as to that it is repeated by a number of separate factors. This means, if there is a process which is governed by the multiple factors, the rate of the process is going to be decided by the place of the slowest factor means the, 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 the impact of the factor which is going to be limiting. So, for example, in this case what you see that if I pro, if we are if I if we are observing the uh, progression of the rate of photosynthesis what you will see that as the as you are increasing the light intensity initially the uh, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing, but after some time it is becoming the constant. It is not increasing as you are increasing the lim uh, as you are increasing the light intensity, and that is uh, that is happening because there is a limited amount of carbon dioxide which is present in the environment. But imagine that if you are doing this in an artificial system, then you can actually increase the CO2. So as you increase the CO2 the the linearity will go again further up, but at that point the uh, again it will reach to a uh, another maxima and in that case again the CO2 is going to be a limiting factor. Similarly, if you imagine that you have a very large quantity of CO2, but in that case the light intensity might be a limiting factor. So, this is just the uh, uh, ex uh, example to show you or explain you that what is mean by the law of limiting factor, but there are multiple criticism of this law of limiting factor which, uh, which uh, prob probably the professor Blackman could not be able to understand at that point, but one of the, uh, one of the easiest criticism was that uh, uh, the uh, imagine that you if even if imagine that if you are providing the A and B and C in a saturating amount, uh, even then you cannot ensure the 
so what was the criticism so criticism was that if you provide even the all the factor like a b c in adequate amount that does not ensure the high processivity of the process high high uh, high uh, velocity of the process there are instances when see what professor blackman said that it's only the one factor which is going to be limited but in the many cases when the biological process is going on it happened that the one or the more limiting factors are present so that is very much contradictory to the law of limiting factor so one or more limiting factor for example the light as well as the carbon dioxide can be a limiting factor so in that case the photosynthesis will severely going to be uh, affected by the both processes okay by the both factors now uh, let's continue with our discussion about the different factors so the first factor what we are going to take is the light so in within the light you can have the three parameter one is called intensity the second one is called as the quality of life and the third is called the duration of life so all these three parameters like intensity as well as the duration as well as the quality of light which the plant is getting is going to in fact affect the uh, photosynthesis in a very very big time so let's see how these processes are affecting the photosynthesis so we'll discuss first about the intensity so in the case of intensity so according to the intensity of a uh, of a light intensity received by the plant the plants are being categorized into the two categories one is called the zeophytes and the other one is called the heliophytes so as you can see on the powerpoint slide i have shown a curve how the light intensity is actually affecting the photosynthesis of c3 or the c4 plant so as we discussing that the light intensity is uh, uh, can be uh, uh, based on the light intensity uh, which plant are taking plant can be categorized into the two categories one is called the zeophyte or the shade loving plant these are the plants which grows uh, which do not grow in open and they like to grow within the shadow and the example within this category is known as the oxalis and many are the other grasses uh, the optimum light intensity what they need to run the photosynthesis is somewhere around 800 to 1000 foot candles so foot candle is also an alternate uh, light intensity measurementing unit and you can imagine that the foot candle means the uh, it is actually a alternate uh, uh, unit compared to the uh, other uh, light intensity measurement unit uh, the optimum light intensity for shade plant is somewhere around 800 to 1000 foot candle and what is mean by 800 to 1000 uh, foot candle is that it is almost the 10% of the total light uh, present in the uh, bright sunny uh, day of a summer the second category is the heliophytes or the sun loving plant these plants are uh, growing in the uh, open and they need very high intensity of light the example is the banyan and all the other uh, trees they uh, the optimal uh, light intensity for the sun plant is somewhere around 5000 to 7000 foot candles and that is approximately 50 to 70% of the total radiation Uh, uh of a full sunny uh, summer sunlight the optimal sunlight uh, which is uh, going to do a photosynthesis is known as the saturation point and what will happen is as we decrease the light intensity the rate of photosynthesis decline 
and uh, uh, as photosynthesis declined the uh, the uh, uptake of uh, co2 is decreased and the uh, uh, evolution of oxygen is also decreased so in that case is what happen is if you are decreasing the light intensity the point is there is a point reached where the uh, there is no evolution of oxygen and there is a no uh, there is no evolution of oxygen and there is no absorption of oxygen and this particular point is called as the light compensation point and at that point there is no photosynthesis happening actually because the whatever is uh, co2 is being uh, uh, taken by the plant. So, there is no gaseous exchange from the outside means the plant is not taking a CO2 which is coming out from the uh, from the environment and uh, similarly it is not giving an any oxygen back means whatever is oxygen coming out from the photosynthesis is being used for the oxidation process. So, in that kind of oxygen compensation point is not good for the plant and the most of the plant could not survive if they will stay in a oxygen uh, in a light compensation point for a longer period of time. And why it is not good because the light compensation point is not uh, uh, allowing the exchange of gases. So, what is mean by the light compensation point? So, light compensation point at this point what is happening is see you have two processes one is called photosynthesis, the other one is called respiration. Now, these two processes are complementary to each other because the photosynthesis is giving the oxygen and that is being used in respiration to produce the carbon dioxide and that is being taken up and assimilate within the photosynthesis to produce the food. This food is going to be used by the plant for its growth. Okay. Similarly, and out of this plant some food is going to be used uh, even for uh, the animal as well. Respiration, respiration is mostly being used in animals and the respiration they will use the food to, uh, to go through with the respiration and that actually will generate the carbon dioxide. So, this is actually a kind of a cycle which is very very important. So, this is the carbon dioxide which is coming from the environment and this is the oxygen which plants are producing outside. So, under this light compensation point what is going to happen uh, is that the plant is not going to give you any oxygen, the plant is not going to take any carbon dioxide. So, under that particular point the whatever the oxygen comes out from the uh, photosynthesis is going to be utilized by the plant itself and that means there is no further production of food. So, this food is not going to be produced if the plant is not going to produce the food, how the plant is going to take the energy from the system because similar to animals, plants are also dependent on the photosynthesis to provide the sugar which they will use in the respiration or the uh, uh, oxidative phosphorylation to generate the energy. So, if, the, if this can cohesion continues for a longer period of time that actually going to affect the growth as well as the survivability of this particular plant and that is how the eventually these two plants are going to die. So, uh, let us go back to the light, uh, light intensity curve and what you will see that the uh, C3 plants are more susceptible for the light intensity compared to the C4 plant means the C4 plant are actually going to withstand the higher number of uh, plant, uh, hi higher, higher number of light density. Similar to the light compensation point, there is a point at which you cannot do a photosynthesis and that point the, uh, uh, the, the, the plants are going to do a uh, 
Okay, so the, the light compensation point for a, uh, for a zeophytes or the shade plant is a 100 foot candle whereas the uh, light compensation point for the heliophyte is the uh, 100 to 400 foot point. The light intensity above saturation point decreases the rate of photosynthesis. As you can see in this one, the C3 plant once the light saturation point is reached, after that there is a decrease in photosynthesis. This prospect is known as the solarization. Okay. So, uh, so far uh, we have discussed about the uh, uh, about the different factors, we have discussed about the CAM plants and we have discussed about C3 and C4 cycle as well. And uh, uh, with this uh, we would like to conclude our lecture here and uh, we will uh, continue our discussion about the remaining factors uh, and how they regulate the rate of photosynthesis in our subsequent lecture. Thank you.